with uh, square wood like this, uh, like a two by two or something. And you turn the ends as fancy as you want to turn them. Can you see these? As fancy as you want to turn them on the ends here, do whatever you want. And then when you take all done turning these round balls like that, and then you take it to your bandsaw and you just cut it on a diagonal. And these make great door stops. Okay, I mean, to give these out for presents and stuff, <coughs> people just, they, you don't see a good door stop. They're all rubber, they're all junk in the hardware stores and stuff. But I know at my house, I got a couple doors that ride a little high and, and they miss those other kinds and stuff, you know. So I put these down and uh, they just make a nice door stop. So you can decorate them and do whatever you want with them. But to me, um, it's just a nice, this is a Sorby Step Center. And uh, I have all different sizes. I, it's like the only center I use. And uh, one of the reasons is, is that it really grips the wood nice. And um, um, they have good ball bearings in them. And they, the point is the wood is going to keep everything together. And I, I, don't know, I just like it better. Who is that made by? Sorby. Sorby? Yeah. Um, Rockler sells them. I think Woodcraft has them. A little dark right there, but turn turn balls and stuff. Uh, one of the harder things, eggs and balls are the hardest things to probably turn on a lathe. And um, I'll show you what I do here. got like a polished edge on it. Can you see that polish? Mm -hmm. The way I did that, it didn't come like that. It came with, uh, it was pretty messed up. Um, <laughs> Steve Sharp is a good friend of mine and we turned together for a long time. We used to meet every week and he got a bunch of these scotch Price pads. That from some business that he works at, and uh, the, the pads were kind of this big, and when they got this small, which is perfect for us, they were throwing them out. Now, if you ever saw a Scotch Brite pad, it's it's like impregnated with a resin or something, but it's um it's like a Scotch Brite you use for your pots and pans. You can put it on a face plate with uh, some MDF backing, and then two of those glued them together, and when I, I reverse spin them. And when I do that, you can put a mirror finish on a tool in seconds. <coughs> in seconds. So it's like really nice to be able to, so if anybody knows about scotch brake pads or where to get them or something like that, it'd be a great thing to get for the club because I love them. Do you know where, Chris? Yeah. How big of a roll do you want? <laughs> Coming across that way, I'm at about half of that height. You know, so some people like to be high, some low. This is where I'm at. By hand, just to turn it and make sure it's not hitting anything. I'm going to play with the skew for a minute. I just got the skew. Never used it before. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it in the demo. <laughs> turn fast. You know, a piece this big, I'm going almost 1900 RPM. That's good. I'm riding the bevel, and then I'm lifting up the handle on the back and coming down the side. Kind of like I did for that other piece. This is all just fundamental right now it's just like um, trying to get down to where I can work with the ball. I gotta, gotta give myself some room on the end of the spindle. 
going to cut into here. I'm going to be making some final cut. I haven't had time to make that in a long time, but I'm going to throw something in a second. It doesn't make any dust. A lot of people, Ellie Abizera has a, a wood turning shop and he says he gets like eight to ten turners in there. And if everybody's sanding and stuff, they're all coughing and they, even though they wear respirators and they got air, you know, filtration system and stuff, he developed this and uh, I don't know if he's the very first one to do it or not, but when you do it, it, uh, it just rolls off. Instead of deep wax and yeah, you know, there's no dust coming up. It's beeswax and uh, mineral oil. 85% mineral oil and uh, only 15 to 20%, depending on you know, how good you can measure it, of beeswax. And it makes a paste. And this stuff it creates a slurry on your sandpaper. And it just ends up falling down to the ground. You don't have a lot of dust in the air. And stuff. Is, it, is that mixture by weight? It's, uh, no. It's, and I measure the, the depth of the pot. And I put in that much, be, so that much beeswax is measuring like 15%. And then I pour the rest with mineral oil. And I, I boil it for a while. It takes a little while to cook it together so that it becomes fused like. So that it's, um, if you don't, when you open up the lid, you'll get a lot of oil um, coming out and everything, but anyway. So Mike, if you want to put a finish on that, how does that work? On this? Yeah. Okay, if you want to break shellac, which shellac is the, the key to um, give, allowing you to put a, 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 a glossy finish on it. But you know, on bowls and everything else, when you put a real gloss on something, I've got a bowl over there, I mean, it's got a high gloss on it. And people don't like it as well as the way this feels, you know. So anyway, you all see my face. Um, so due to a time constraints, I'm just going to do the one, and then the one. So I want to take that and just, you know, if you want to pass it around or not. But that's how you turn a ball. It doesn't even turn. He made one like 20 years ago and I still have it. I don't know if all of you have like chop saws or anything, but I like to use a chop saw with my turning a lot. Especially if I'm production turning. I got a couple things I'm going to show you. And I prefer to take this thing over to the chop saw and cut the end off rather than trying to fight it. Anymore. So that's that stuff. This is going to go up against the um, 
with this fan or when I get back in my shop. And I do need to make this a little bit more round.